Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. In this video, I'm going to go over all of the clothing that you are going to need for the Otter Trail. In addition to telling you exactly which items I'm going to be packing for myself, I will also mention a few other options that you might like to try because clothing is obviously a very personal thing and everyone has their own ideas about what is going to work best for them. So this is basically all of the clothing that I take with me on the otter. First of all, when I am actually hiking, I'll start from the inside out. Obviously I wear underwear. I just wear a pair of synthetic regular panties, which are very similar to the types of panties that I wear in everyday life. I like the synthetic underwear because it's very quick drying. So I usually take two sets of underwear, sometimes three, and then I just wash and rotate them. I also wear a synthetic sports bra and I do my best to make all of the underpants and bras black because this is also my swimwear. I don't take additional swimwear to the otter. I just use my underwear like a bikini and if it's black, it looks a little bit less odd. I usually also take two bras and then I just wash and rotate them. Then on my feet when I'm hiking, my current favorite socks are from Balega. B-A-L-G, no, B-A-L-E-G-A, -E Balega, and these particular ones are the Blister Resist socks. For socks, I usually bring two pairs of socks for hiking in. Because the Otter Trail has a lot of river crossings, there's a really good chance that your feet are going to get wet at some point and you might want to change into a pair of dry socks. So I always have two for hiking in and then I wash and rotate them and then I bring an additional thicker pair for sleeping in at night. What I wear on my top is this Columbia. I think it's, yeah, it's a, a Columbia collared button-up shirt that is long-sleeved, but the sleeves can be rolled up and buttoned into place so that they're a short sleeve or a long sleeve. So generally in the mornings when it's a bit colder in winter, I start out with it as a long sleeve. And then as I hike and I get warmer in the day, I just roll it up and turn it into a short sleeved shirt. If you prefer to hike in a more traditional kind of t-shirt, then that's 100% fine. I would suggest staying away from cotton because it takes so long to dry once it's wet. It gets incredibly cold once it's wet. It chafes you once it's wet. So this, for instance, kind of looks like cotton, but it's actually a merino wool t-shirt. This works really well as a hiking t-shirt. And this one is a synthetic material. It's like a running t-shirt that you can buy from a sports store. And these also work incredibly well. For many years, I just hiked in these kinds of t-shirts and they were great. The pants that I wear, these are from the North Face. I've got quite a few different pairs of hiking pants. They're all synthetic material. They all dry really quickly. These ones are slightly lighter weight, but you can get ones that are a bit thicker if you tend to get cold really easily. I like long pants if I do have to walk through bushes and things like that. On my head, I have a peak cap. This is a running one from Salomon, but you can use really any kind of hat. Just be aware that cotton hats, if they get wet, are going to stay wet for much, much longer. A lot of people prefer a wide brim hat, something like this, which is nice because it blocks the sun in a nice big circle around your face. The reason why I don't hike in a wide brim hat is because my torso is very short. What I find is that the back of the brim tends to scratch against my backpack and it doesn't really affect me functionally, but I really can't stand that noise. It drives me completely crazy. So I just opt for having a hat. The very last thing that I do wear while I'm hiking is a buff around my neck. I really like having a buff around my neck for three reasons. One is to keep the sun off, one is to keep my neck warm if it is cold, and the third reason, which I get a lot of flack for from my fellow hikers, is as a kind of portable tissue. My nose tends to run a lot when I hike, it just always has. As I exert myself, my nose streams like crazy, and then I can just kind of dab it off on this buff and I wash this every night and hang it out to dry and it's also a synthetic material so it dries really really fast. 
I also take a buff that I wear at night. This one is actually a fleece material that I was also given by a friend. Thanks very much, Steph. This one is obviously a lot warmer because it's a fleece material. And I use this around my neck as a sort of scarf and I can also pull it right over my head as a beanie as well, which is really nice. This is more of a traditional style beanie. In winter, I would say some kind of warm headwear is quite important at night when you're cooking or even just if you are sleeping and it's too warm to put the hood of your sleeping bag over you but your ears are still getting a little bit cold, having some kind of warm hat for your head is a really good idea. The other thing that I take with me every time is gloves and that's because my hands tend to get really really cold. These two gloves are actually incredibly similar. These ones are from Salomon and they don't make this kind of glove anymore which I'm really sad about because this is one of my all-time favorite pieces of gear but they're actually fingerless gloves but on the back they have a water resistant wind resistant mitten that you can flip forward over your fingers and these are really really great in slightly warmer weather or if I'm running and then for slightly colder weather these ones are from Decathlon I think they're the Four Claws brand and it's a similar idea they're also fingerless and then this mitten flips up over them but they're considerably warmer because inside of this mitten it is fleece lined. In terms of the clothes that I wear to sleep at night. I just take a pair of fleece pajamas. That's the top and these are the long pants. I take these because it is winter. I do recommend taking something warm and clean to wear at night after you've wiped the dust from the trail away. In summer you could definitely get away with a much lighter weight option just like a clean t-shirt and a clean set of shorts or something because it doesn't get nearly as cold in summer. But we are going in winter, so the other thing that I take is a jacket, or in my case, this monstrosity, which is by far my favorite item of clothing. It's not entirely just an item of clothing, though. I wear this as a poncho, like a puffy poncho, and it's incredibly warm, but it is also a down blanket and you can also clip it into the shape of a sleeping bag and use it as a sleeping bag. And it's actually very, very lightweight despite its deceptively large size. Once you crumple it down into a smaller ball and stuff it in your backpack, it's very lightweight and it takes up almost no space at all. It also has another trick up its sleeve, which is it can stuff into its own pocket and become a pillow. So normally I wear this as a poncho to stay warm and then I turn it into a pillow to sleep with at night. Of course, most people are not going to be using something as eccentric as a down poncho, but I do recommend taking something to stay warm at night. This is probably a more traditional option, just a puffy jacket of some variety. This one is down, but you can get synthetic ones, which are a lot cheaper. So totally up to you which option you choose. If you don't like puffy jackets, then you can also just take a heavier weight fleece or something like that to wear over your pajamas. In summer, you really wouldn't need a massively warm item, but you will need something warm at night because it is going to get cold. Sometimes around the coast when the wind blows, it can actually be pretty chilly. Then the very last item on the table is my rain gear. This one happens to be a rain poncho that also goes over my backpack as well as over me to keep me dry. I had a different variety of this style of thing that I used last year which didn't have sleeves. It was more of the traditional poncho that was just a gigantic square and clipped around me with a belt and that worked completely fine but because you are hiking along the coast on the Otter Trail the wind can be pretty intense so this year I'm going with something that is a little bit more structured just so that it's not such a pain when the wind is blowing it around. But I would recommend taking proper full-on rain gear for the Otter Trail because you never know for 100% certain that on all five of those days it is not going to rain. Even if you look at the weather forecast right before you start day one, it's still a slight bit of a gamble. 
I almost forgot to talk about shoes, which are arguably the most important item of clothing that you're going to be taking along on the otter. I like to hike in trail runners. These are also from Salomon. They're the Sense Ride 4s. But my recommendation is to just hike in whatever you are most comfortable in. If that is traditional hiking boots, that's completely fine. One thing that you are going to have to be aware of with traditional hiking boots though, you definitely need to take an extra pair of shoes with for the river crossings because there are many river crossings on the Otter Trail and if you have traditional hiking boots, either leather or some kind of waterproof hiking boot, they are going to take absolute ages to dry. Otherwise, if like me, you enjoy hiking in trail runners or trainers of some kind, you can just do the river crossings in these shoes and I haven't had a problem with getting them to dry overnight for the next day. And if they happen to be a little bit wet, I take this very high-tech piece of equipment with me, which is an, an empty bread bag, just the plastic bag that a bread loaf comes in, and I shove my foot into here. So I put my foot into my sock, I put my socked foot into this, and then I put the entire lot into my shoe. So this just makes a waterproof layer so that my sock doesn't get wet. Otherwise, you could take a pair of camp shoes with you. I'm not doing that this year, but last year I took a pair of Crocs with me. These are very nice as camp shoes. They're a little bit bulky, but they're actually fairly lightweight. And they're nice because they have a little bit of toe protection so that you don't stub your toe so easily. I would caution against using this type of sandal for river crossings though. I tried doing blowcrants wearing these and it was an absolute nightmare. This shoe slips on the very slippery rocks and your foot slips inside here as well. And it's just a recipe for falling over or twisting your ankle. So for all of the river crossings, my recommendation is to have a proper laced up pair of shoes that can protect your whole foot and has proper grip at the bottom. That is your best chance of having a good time with the river crossings. It is the morning that we're going to start the Otter Trail and I have made two small changes to my clothing lineup. The weather is actually fairly chilly so I've just added a merino wool base layer that's this gray t-shirt thing here, it's a long sleeved, underneath my regular hiking shirt and I've also got a long sleeved, a uh, long pants, um, merino wool, oh gosh you can't even see it, these, these black ones, these are long pants of a merino wool base layer as well. I'm gonna be taking this beanie off and just wearing the cap, I just have it on now to keep my ears warm. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more from me, then you can click on my channel name to see videos that I've made in the past, or you can subscribe to my channel to see videos that I'm going to make in the future.